seen it happen, Dell for Entrepreneurs, Kauffman Foundation, and Launch Tennessee. At the same time, our amazing judges, thank you for being here. Um, Gil Beverly, Senior Vice, Senior Vice President, Chief Marketing and Revenue Officers for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Brian France, former CEO and Chairman of NASCAR and founder of Silver Falcon Capital. And, um, and then Sammy Rubin, co-founder of Treller and founder of Big Room. And then Damon Whiteside is supposed to be on, I'm not sure if he's been able, but the CEO of the Academy of Country Music, who recently had the first live um, award show in Nashville um, that was about a month ago. So amazing people. Thanks all of you for being here. Um, and then obviously another important role in making it all come together is the volunteers. And so we had a group of volunteer experts that reviewed all of the different pitches and narrowed it down to these in six impressive entrepreneurs. It takes a village and we are so grateful that all of you are a part of our village and a part of our community. And we're grateful for the business and the investment community to surround these amazing entrepreneurs and help us as we are helping them connect to resources to help change the face in the industry. So I know you're eager to hear others besides me. So with that, take it away. Thank you, Jane. My name is Bryn Plummer and I'm Vice President of Inclusion and Community Relations at the National Entrepreneur Center. Jeremy and I will be your co-host for this event. Consider Jeremy the producer. Um, I'm the Regis Philbin. He's the uh, whatever Regis is. I'm aging myself. Regis had an assistant named Gelman, who was his producer for the people who are Gen Z's in the audience. Regis Philbin, I digress. Um, we're really glad that you're all here this afternoon. We hope that this will be a fun opportunity to learn about the entrepreneurs who are in our ecosystem, as well as to get inspired and excited, even in the midst of this changing world that we're in. There's still innovators, there's still disruptors, there's still people who are working day in and day out to make our world one in which we can um, achieve new and exciting and different things. So with that, I wanna get into some housekeeping. One, this is clearly a webinar, so you won't be able to talk, but you can certainly participate in the chat to keep things going. We certainly use the chat function to celebrate people, to um, provide any kind of affirmation, and also to comment on things that we find interesting. So the chat is your function and your feature to share your voice today. This event is being recorded, so we can share it in all its glory afterwards. If you haven't seen it, the YouTube channel of the National Entrepreneur Center is where we log and catalog all of our past events. So if you're ever interested in seeing what happened um, in the previous event, you can go check that out, highly encourage it. And then lastly, I wanted to cover what an elevator pitch is because that's what we're going to be seeing for the bulk of today's event. So if you got into an elevator and you saw one of our judges and you had a life-changing idea, but you only had, say, from the time you're on floor one to floor 20 to convince them and get them on board with your idea. That's exactly what an elevator pitch is. You have this kind of captive 60 seconds with this person. There's no slides, no visuals, just you, your idea, and your energy to convince this person you're talking to. This is a crucial tool for entrepreneurs, especially as we go into this world where we're interacting in some really interesting or even tight spaces. We have this one hour together today, for example. So it's a crucial opportunity for them to master and also a way to get to know them in just a little tidbit, kind of like a sample of what their business is. So now let's meet our judges. As Jane mentioned, we have some judges from across the music and entertainment space today um, and across kind of the, the industries that make Nashville as a, a huge sports city and destination kind of make Nashville a really unique space and place to live. So first, we have Gil Beverly. Gil is the Senior Vice President, Chief Marketing and Revenue Officer of the Tennessee Titans. Good afternoon, Gil. How are you doing? I'm awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Brent. I really appreciate it. We are glad that you're here. And shout out to the undefeated Titans. Titan up. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think I'm doing old. I appreciate that. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, we'll say it probably 30 times on this call. So be prepared. <laughs> um, and also, I should say that EC and Titans just announced a partnership related to Pitch for Good. Um, so I don't know if you want to chime in a little bit about that, Gail, but I'll say a word about it from our end. We are thrilled to be partnering with the Titans to find a small business or startup of the year that would work with the Titans. Those win that winner will be chosen from all the winners of the Pitch for Good series that have taken place across 2020. So I don't know, Gail, if you had anything from the Titans and that you'd want to share about that. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, um, the Tennessee Titans, we view uh, the city of Nashville and, and uh, Middle Tennessee as a region, um, as a, a place of, of dreamers and doers. And we have a, a great res uh, respect and love for those that have 
you know, the vision and the imagination it takes to envision a better world and the things and products and services that it'll take to get us there. And then the Tennessee toughness um, to actually execute and get out and do it. Um, so that's why um, us, along with our partners, uh, Pinnacle Financial, um, we are interested in working with you guys. We're very excited to be working with the NAC uh, to identify um, an entrepreneurial venture or small business um, partner um, that will emerge from the pitch, from good, pitch for Good editions across um, all verticals uh, going back to, I think it was June through uh, December. Mm -hmm. And we're really going to pit the winners in a um, playoffs of sort. Um, where the, those who have won um, the individual pitch for good um, contest will be um, in a broader contest in January to, for the opportunity to work, for, work with us um, throughout 21 as a Titans official sponsor. Um, so we're very Huge. excited by that. Um, we're hoping to draw upon uh, the energy and the creativity and the dynamism that um, is in, inherent in all these pitches and all these awesome ventures that are getting off the ground and looking forward to see, seeing where that takes us. Yay! So I guess if you're pitching today, listen up because you could be, you will be part of this Tennessee Tough gauntlet going down in January during playoff season. Thanks for being here, Gil. We're glad to have you on board. You've given us a lot of time and energy over the past few months, so we appreciate seeing you in this dynamic particularly so other people can see how much you've given us. Next, we have Brian France. Brian is the former chairman and CEO of NASCAR, a company started by his family in 1948. I'm sure I don't have to explain to anyone on this call, how important NASCAR is to the U.S. and to the Southeast particularly. I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina, so in the heart of race country, not far from Charlotte where you all are. Brian shepherded NASCAR into the modern era by aggregating the media rights across the industry and negotiating several multi-billion dollar television deals. He led the global expansion of the company while spearheading the design, development, and implementation of the industry's intellectual property. And among other accomplishments, he started the Green Initiative, along with several other diversity and safety initiatives, um, and brought the end entire industry together commercially and really into the 21st century. Brian, welcome to the call. Welcome to the pitch competition. We're glad you're here. Well, it's good to be here. And let me just first start out by saying that, you know, we love Nashville in terms of the market and the entrepreneurial spirit that, you know, one trip through there, and I've made many, you really feel it. You see it. It's a city on the move. The people are uh, vibrant and, and, and by NASCAR days, it, that's all we did was, uh, was fight uphill against the other leagues and uh, to try to uh, establish ourselves. So I, I have a little experience in, in climbing uh, big hills and uh, with a headwind on top of it. So now, uh, you know, we're investing alongside uh, entrepreneurs and people with great ideas to, to add our influence our help, and more importantly, just that we've been in their shoes. We know what it's like to, to dream big and think uh, think long, and we want to be, uh, and we have a long view on uh, uh, everything that we're trying to do. So we're happy to be, I'm happy to be here and look forward to the presentations. Thank you. We're glad you're here, Brian. We are very glad that you're here and excited to be partnering with you on this. And then our last two judges, we have Sammy Rubin, who is coming to us from Westchester, New York today. Sammy is the co-founder of Triller, which you might have heard of, and founder of Big Room. Sammy, thanks for being on. We're glad you're here. Hi. Thanks for Hi. having me. Hi. Of course. Yes. And Damon Whiteside, lastly, Damon Whiteside. Damon is uh, someone who's been really helpful to the Entrepreneur Center over the years in a ton of different domains, but particularly in the marketing space. Damon is the um, CEO at the Academy of Country Music. I'm sorry, CMO, Chief Marketing Officer at the Academy of Country Music. Um, Damon, are you on? I am here, yes. Thank you for having me. And, and actually, uh, CEO, you were right. Uh, oh, good, okay. <laughs> Country music. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, but yeah, no, we're thrilled to be part of this. I'm I'm really happy to still be a big part of the Entrepreneur Center. I really believe in your mission, proud board member, and um, just, you know, love the city of Nashville. I personally reside in Nashville, though the rest of our staff is based in Los Angeles. I'm the lucky one that gets to be in LA or in Nashville. And uh, we just, of course, had our ACM Awards show in Nashville here back last month in September. So it was a good way for us to be able to shine a light on the on this great city and just really excited to hear some of these pitches today and we continue as an organization too to figure out how we can support the music industry um, through these challenging times and help find new business models and ways that we can just support 
um, through this pandemic. So just excited today to hear all these young entrepreneurs and their, their great ideas. So thank you. And congratulations on that event. It was beautiful, super well executed. Um, and I think a model for how a lot of other uh, industry industries will be moving forward as they think about their award shows and, and ways to celebrate the talent and people that make the industry possible. So congrats on that. And congrats again on the CEO spot. Well-deserved, well-earned. Thanks, Brian. Of course, yes. All right, friends, it is time to get into it. This is the time we've all been waiting for. I'm sure our entrepreneurs out there are shaking out their nerves. All righty. Okay, ground rules. Every entrepreneur gets a minute. And then our judges will have two minutes for Q&A. Um, and then we'll go in alphabetical order just to keep some parity among who gets to go first. With that, we are ready to begin our pitches. I'm just going to make sure our, our wonderful entrepreneurs are out there. Ira Akers of Q Audio. Ira, are you out there? It is a little second where we figure out, well, where he gets designated and he has to come off mute and so on and so forth. So it usually takes a second. I'm here. Perfect. All right, Ira. Okay. Ira, are you ready for your minute? I am. It's short, but I'm ready. <laughs> Ira <laughs> Akers of Q Audio. Ira, take it away. Hey, guys. I'm Ira Akers, co-founder of Q Audio. Here at Q, we've created a way to send data through high-frequency inaudible audio. Our tech has many use cases. For example, we're currently deployed in a contact tracing application, a rideshare ticketing platform, and we're working with Comcast to pilot a new standard in accessibility where we help people with impaired vision easily receive QR codes by way of what we call an audio QR code. To date, however, live events have been our most popular use case. Our clients leverage attendees' phones to create synchronized smartphone activation, which means zero waste to the environment, unlike that of light up wristbands. Our suite of products include a smartphone light show whereby fans' phones light up with the music, a synchronized selfie cam that allows entire stadiums to take a selfie at the exact same time, and head-to-head -head trivia like that of the incredibly popular HQ Trivia. Working with over 50 Division I universities, many professional sports teams and racetracks, large tours and festivals, we've enabled fans to feel more a part of the show, even if they're at home. Our clients create fan loyalty, brand affinity, and calls to action that produce results. Thank you. Any questions? Beautifully done in a minute, Ira. Congratulations. Congratulations on nailing that minute. It was like 59 seconds. <laughs> <That's unbelievable. laughs> All right. You. You have, you're very welcome. You have two minutes to ask Ira your questions. I'll start the clock and I'll also give a 15 second warning. All right, judges, you may begin. How big is the market, Ira? How big is the market? Yeah. Well, with our technology, we're in multiple markets. So it just depends on which market. Like I said, with Rideshare, uh, we've just started in that vertical. As you can imagine, COVID's opened up, uh, made us pivot out of live events and into some things that we've really wanted to over the last two years. So um, Rideshare is opening up some big opportunities. Working with Comcast has opened up some big opportunities. Uh, we've doubled in revenue to date over the last two and a half years, um, just in live events. So the market is quite large, uh, consider it, uh, compare it to Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, we're just delivering small packets of data using sound. Something so that we, you, oh, go ahead. Okay. Can you talk no, more ahead. about the, the, act, um, the applications in the live sports and live entertainment environment? So you mentioned sure. selfies and smartphones, but are there other things, like what do you see as other value yeah. added consumer experience? That's great, uh, Gil, great question. So we work with the uh, New Orleans Saints. Um, we took their intro video, we overlaid that with um, our inaudible triggers, and then we gave them back that audio file or that video file to where when they press play on that video that's played in their stadium, uh, everyone's phone synchronized to a light show. So uh, SeatGeek sponsored that. They put the brand uh, on the face of the phone that lit up and uh, had the Saints um, colors on screen, created a synchronized light show. And then at the end of the light show, we actually delivered a coupon code to everyone for a SeatGeek discount. So that is a, a great example. You can actually see some videos uh, of that activation with the Saints. 
And, and if I can just follow up real quick, what, what's that the business model behind that? Are you licensing the technology to the That's same right. property for a specific amount of time or? That's right. So they, they license it for the season. We're an SDK. We work with the scan. We put our SDK inside of their app. We delivered more downloads than they'd seen since they first launched the app back in 2014. Uh, so anyone that has the app can be a part of the activation. All right, Ira, that is your time. Great work, Ira. <laughs> thank you. And thank you to our judges. Nice also, job. love thank your you. background. Look at those beautiful plants. Wow, wow, wow. You got to love a little festive background. All right. Up next, we've got Eric Nelson of FanFlex. Eric, are you on the line? There we go. Perfect. All right. Great to see you, Eric. It um, it's going great. It's, I mean, I'm in the virtual world. I keep bumping into my plant, making my green screen weird, loving the internet. Um, but I'm so glad to hear you, to see you here. You've been a long time part of the EC and so we're happy to see you on. Are you ready for your minute? Absolutely. All right, I'm going to start the clock. You may begin. Hello, I'm Eric Nelson and I'm one of the founders of FanFlex. FanFlex solves the problem of unused inventory in the live music business by allowing venues to upload their concert calendar and availability dates so that musicians can fill empty time slots by bringing their live paying fans. Venues can now focus on maximizing their food and beverage sales and not have to worry about losing money on a show. Musicians can sell direct fan to band tickets, track fan data, and keep 100% of the ticket money they generate. As venues reopen in a post COVID world, never before has there been a need so necessary for a venue to maximize their hours of operation and capacity. And FanFlex's traction throughout the pandemic is a testament to this need. In March, we were doing shows at 40 venues in two states with 3,500 vetted musicians across the country. And today, we have over 150 venues in 20 states in America with 5,000 artists ready to go as soon as it is safe to do so. FanFlex is excited to bring live music back to communities across America, putting people to work and keeping small businesses afloat. And that is why we are here pitching for good thank you eric thank you so much i mean in nashville i don't think we can un i don't think you can overstate how much the independent music venue matters to a city like nashville and more broadly to a state like tennessee where we have you know roots music on the east side of the country and blues on the west side of the country on, on the state excuse me and then uh country right here holding it down in music city so this is an exciting um opportunity that we have to to work with fanflex all right yeah, yeah. All right, judges, you've got two minutes. You may begin. Um, great pitch, Eric. Uh, independent venues mean a lot to me. I just, uh, Big Room just worked with on the Save Our Stages uh, YouTube event. Uh, we, we installed the Exit Inn in Mercy in Nashville for that. And uh, it really good, good, uh, you know, good stuff. Um, question. You love Neva, so. Cool. So how many, so when did you start this? Be, how far be, before COVID did you start this? And when, how many venues were actually doing this before that? Absolutely. So uh, pre-COVID, we were operating in the Los Angeles and Orange County area in Southern California for about two years and the Nashville area about one year. Uh, with our acceptance into Project Music in 2019, that's when we opened up that market in Nashville. Um, and at the time, we had about 25 venues in SoCal and about uh, 15 or so in the Nashville area. Um, how, how often would the venues out of like, let's say out of 10 empty spots that they had, how often would they be able to book that up? Yeah, so we offer a freemium model. So basically venues uh, work off a subscription model with us. And if they do two shows a month, or two open calendar dates a month. It's in that free kind of uh, category. And then uh, beyond that, uh, it's a monthly subscription fee, which we're actually waiving uh, through the pandemic. So we could keep all these independent uh, venues open. Uh, and most of our venues are 300 cap and below uh, traditional and non-traditional venues. 
I was just curious on the the revenue model. How does the venue, if at all, I, I understand they need to subscribe, but is there any other profit participation for them? So basically they save time and money. So now bands are paid directly by their fans. So if let's say just uh, a honky tonk in Nashville or Austin, they have live music, but their main business model is actually food and beverage. And they have a hundred to 250 dollars a time slot to pay an act. Well, now the artist could actually make more money directly selling to their fans. And that revenue or that money that the venue's paying goes in their pocket. So that's already a cost savings, not to mention the unsolicited uh, emails and time they have to waste, you know, filtering through all the, the questions to play. All right, that is FanFlex. Thank you again, Eric. And um, thanks for holding it down on the West Coast, representing Project Music out there. Absolutely. All right, up next, Timothy Burkhead. Timothy Burkhead of TM App, TM App. Seeing something's happening with the screen. Jeremy looks like he's making some producing decisions on that end. Jeremy, how's it looking? Tim is technically on as a panelist. Okay. Waiting for him to share his video and audio. Wait, let me. Let's make sure. Thanks for hanging in there. Here we go. There's two Perfect. of them. Perfect. He's a clone. <laughs> He probably has two screens. I think there I'm also there on two is. screens. Okay. We hear Timothy. Do you see Timothy yet? I do. Jeremy? You do see Timothy? Okay. Hi. We see Timothy. Jeremy, Hi. can you advance to the next slide? There we go. Timothy. Hey. Wow, I love in the music and entertainment pitch for good all the concert posters and live venue posters that we're going to see in background so we saw air posters yeah it's it's like the music's still here we're all I like that you're also fans of this industry you work in which is obvious and expected but right. still exciting all right timothy are you ready for your minute of pitching to talk I'm about ready. tm app well let's talk about innovation in nashville as a tour manager i know it can take hundreds of emails to coordinate the logistics of even a small show with our TM app, you can fully advance an email, an event in two emails. Until now, advancing a tour has been a singular path through multiple people, text, emails, programs. You're only able to work as fast and accurately as the info you receive whenever you receive it. That's a waste of time, talent, and human resources. Now imagine the touring industry version of Slack, streamlined communication to quickly and effortlessly advance a concert. Well, it's called the TM app. The TM app centers the show and allows collaboration between the agent, manager, tour manager, and venue promoter to add and share information from a central database for a band and event. The results are more accurate and up-to-date info and efficient communication. Save time with artists and venue profiles. Save money with program integrations and automation. And in real time, you can monitor one or multiple tours from a web-based dashboard. The live event industry, touring industry worldwide has completely stopped. We have a momentous opportunity to come back stronger, better, and more organized together. With the TM app, every tour and venue will relaunch in 2020 something from the same starting line, advanced and prepared to once again entertain the world. Excuse me, to entertain the world. I'm TM Tim, the CEO of TM Inc. And with the TM app, we are touring advanced. Any questions? Great pitch, Tim. It made me really excited to go back to tours and to see live music again. Thank you, you so you. much. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, can't wait. Um, can't wait to get back to those. All right, judges, we have two minutes on the clock. I'm going to start the time, and you all may begin. Uh, I'll go back to the well of my question about the revenue model. So is, is, where is the revenue coming from? Is it all direct? Or just where's the revenue coming from? What's the actual transaction and who's participating. So we're running a few models. We have a subscription-based model that's monthly, but we're also looking at a ticketing piece in which you can create a show, uh, you can send out an offer, you can settle through the app as well, and we take a piece of the ticket sales. Who in the, this obviously, the, 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 some of the big guys that, uh, um, 
Live Nation and others have some version of this, correct? Well, you think, we haven't found it yet. We know that people have pieces of this. People have a settlement piece or they have um, you know, some form of sharing the information, but no one truly takes the advancing, putting all the info together and sharing it from one location. We haven't found that yet in the United States. Hmm. So I know. Does, this, does this have, I mean, obviously touring uses master tour. I know a lot, but I don't, I think that's all just internal to the artist team. So this is essentially taking that to the next level of adding in the venues. So then that way there's direct communication with the venues and the artist teams. Well, this, adds, right? this adds a few steps before. Uh, what we do again is we take in the advance. We create the advance, give everyone a piece to interact in and out. And keep in mind, this is for tours because we are from tours, but this is for event management in general. So uh, you take the information in, you compile it, everyone can collaborate, and then you share it. Essentially, you could take it and share it with Master Tour, which is what Master Tour does. They share your information. Understand. So is this like an artist? based version of like prism then is it do you, who's the main user of I'll, I'll look at the prism i can't make a comparison to that but what, what i will say is this is a tool that's meant to bring in the agent the manager even the band and the venue all to one place so that everyone can put in their tools and their pieces and everyone can get out the information that they need from there as well And that is our time. Tim, thank you so much. Thank we you. are so glad you were here to share about TM app. Up next, again, continuing with the touring insider info. I know we have some folks here who are deep in the touring world, including our next pitcher, Riley Vasquez. Riley will be telling us about Tour Collective. Riley, are you on the line? Hey, Bryn, can you hear me? Can you see I can me? Hear you perfectly. I can perfect. see you perfectly. Wow. Yeah, great Beautiful see, uh, background. Thank you. Oh thank you, my thank goodness. You. The game has been changed today by the participants on this call and their beautiful backgrounds. Okay. We're glad you're here, Riley. Riley, do you feel ready to give your pitch? I do. I do. I want you to picture going to see your favorite band perform and then finding out the people behind the scenes who dedicate their lives to making that show successful while they struggle to find jobs. They're often underrepresented and many times feel stuck in their career. Right now, after a pandemic, there are millions of live music professionals who've lost their jobs. They have no idea how to move forward in their touring career. Tour Collective helps those people find jobs. We help them advance their career and create better lives for themselves. I understand exactly how these touring crew members feel because I've been one for the last 10 years. You could be an expert at what you do in your field, but the problem is it's extremely difficult to find a job and there are very few resources for growth. Now just imagine an industry that's being pushed forward because the workers feel taken care of and have a clear path to growth. It's gonna create better work environments. It's gonna create more engaging live experiences and it's even gonna improve our local economy right here in Nashville. My name is Riley Vasquez. My company is Tour Collective. Hop on the bus with us as we're helping tour crew members find jobs, advance in their careers, and ultimately create better lives for themselves and their families. Great pitch, Riley. And um, what an I concept. I think this is one of the true examples of something like 70% of entrepreneurial ventures arise from the job that someone had before they became an entrepreneur, of course. This is such a niche need that I would never never have thought of because I didn't work in the industry the way that you did. So um, love that you're bringing attention to something that is a, a huge issue that supports something we all enjoy live music. Um, what a cool concept. All right, judges, you've got two minutes to ask Riley your questions. I will start the clock. Um, if I can start. Uh, so, I mean, it's obviously a prep problem that you hit on. You didn't really say anything about what you're doing to solve what you're doing for them, just saying that you're finding jobs for them. Do you like, like, look online? Like, what, what do you do? What are you doing here? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. There are no jobs posted online for this industry. It's just plain and simple. No jobs on ZipRecruiter, no jobs on LinkedIn. And that's because there's a lot of sensitive info that's involved in these jobs. Beyonce is not going to post a position on, uh, on uh, you know, something that anyone can find. So this is a closed network. And basically we go to managers, we go to artists, we have artists coming to us 
and we have a email list built currently. And uh, we find those jobs, we negotiate a rate uh, for those jobs, we find out everything the job entails, and then we find the right crew people to fit those roles. So um, the problem with just texting friends is you may only have a few people in your current network. And, uh, and so we can go out, um, we have a pretty large network, you know, people in LA, Austin, Nashville, even the UK, and we can kind of um, help curate a tour, if you will. So you're like a talent agency for, for uh, tour? Yeah, absolutely. Recruiting, talent agency, um, however you'd like to label it. So it happens now by just word of mouth and, and, and industry inside trading discussions and I call somebody and is that how it happens now? That is exactly how it happens. It's been happening like that for a long time. And, uh, but the problem is people's network tend, tend to be pretty small. And so once they've gone through a few people, they don't know their solution. So we're helping them find solutions like a band that came across uh, the water to the U S UK band first tour sold out 20 shows. We helped them staff an entire tour. They had never met anyone and uh, had a very, very successful tour uh, here in the U S. Okay. Can, can you describe your business model and where is the revenue coming mm -hmm. from? Yeah, currently uh, it is, uh, it costs to post a job to the network. Uh, currently I do not charge crew members to be part of the network, but we do take a 10% uh, fee on the job to introduce them to a new uh, person in the network. So uh, we introduce them to the job, take 10% off the job. Typically we try to make sure that the job, we try to vet the job and also vet the person uh, just like you would in any kind of, you know, hiring agency. Well, it seems high. <clears throat> okay. It could be high. All right, friends, let's, be, let's close. I think I let you go a little bit over, but there were a lot of really good questions. I didn't want to stop. Riley, thank you so much. Thanks so much, friend. We appreciate the work that you're doing to bring attention to this industry. Up next, Kevin McCarty of We Should Write Some Time. Let's get Kevin... Can you hear me? On deck. We can hear you. Wow, that was so fast. You were you must have been waiting on the button. I love that. Okay. Kevin's ready for his pitch. Kevin, the floor is yours. Songwriters are the heart of the music industry, and our mission is to help songwriters do what they love, which is write hit songs on their journey to success. And the data shows co-writing plays a massive part in songwriting success. The problem for songwriters is not only finding other ones, but then finding the right ones to co-write with. And given our current social uh, restrictions, this has become even more of a challenge. And if you don't know anyone or not in a music town, good luck. So in November, 2018, we launched our free app appropriately named, We Should Write Some Time. Rolling Stone called us Tinder for Songwriters. We're the only app solely focused on connecting songwriters and users can also geolocate to other cities and countries to find songwriters in those areas so now songwriters can sit on the couch and find the perfect co-writes with a simple swipe right, saving a lot of time and energy. And with virtual writing becoming much more common, this puts us at a very advantageous position to scale even quicker across the globe uh, while maintaining social measures as well. And since our launch, we've organically grown to over 5,000 users and been featured in Forbes, Billboard, and Rolling Stone magazine, currently available in US, Canada, Australia, and Israel. Uh, and expanding to more countries very, very soon. Swipe right. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much. And my in-laws actually met on a songwriting app or a songwriting platform. Uh, they uh, met on. I was like, wait, please tell me this one. <laughs> I think they met on song ramp. So thank hmm. you to for having a you gave me a great stepfather in law. Um, this <laughs> industry of connecting, uh, connecting. Thank you, potential songwriters, judges. You have two minutes to ask your questions of Kevin. If we should write sometime, take it away. Um, is this an advertising supported business or a subscription model or is it a one-time purchase of the app or, or yeah not? and good question we're we're uh building out the freemium model if you will now like right now it's free to download and free to use but we're building in kind of the next tier which is going to have some premium features which will will charge for those but it will be free to download and then be able to use much like the dating apps now their business model 
um, we'll have a little bit of a subscription for songwriters to, so that we can generate revenue that way. But we want to help songwriters as much as possible. Um, and then the other way is, to your point, starting to, as we get to the user growth and base that we want, uh, putting in advertisements and partnerships that we've already started conversations with uh, when it comes to users and data and advertisements. And if I can quick follow up, I don't want to dominate, but how did you determine the extent to which this is a problem? You know, as I'm not a musician. Sure. Vision of musicians are is of people making music and hanging out with other musicians. Like, is this a true challenge in the sense of people having a hard time finding people to write with? Sure. And, and I think it just comes from, um, I'll keep this short, my time in Nashville doing a podcast with some pretty big name songwriters and musicians and, and hearing them talk about this, the, the challenges of finding, you know, even in Nashville, you can find a songwriter walking down the street and going out, but uh, it's finding the right one to, to write the, the style and genre. Do they have the skill set um, as a songwriter that you're looking for to help elevate that song and create the best song possible? And from a data per perspective, um, on last year, if we look at Billboard's top 100 songs, it took almost five and a half songwriters to write that song, uh, which is an ever increasing trend. So the data supports it, but also just from my experience as a, I played music uh, my whole life, not anymore, but um, in my experience around songwriters and some big ones that said, look, I don't wanna have to go out and network uh, all the time. And, and I just would rather, I'm a little bit of an introvert and that's kind of not my thing, but I need to find other songwriters. So that's typically how it's been done. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's an unknown problem unless you're really involved, if you will. Yeah. All right, Kevin, thank you so much for answering those questions. Thank you to our judges for your great questions. Um, and I don't even know what to say. You won background, I think, today. You won background, for sure. Um, and we appreciate you so much for being on and for keeping songwriting going through this pandemic. All right, Sam is our last presenter of the day. Sam Brooker of Winner. Let's see. Hey guys. Sam. There you are. Am we I hear here? Your voice. Yes, we hear your voice. We see you. See you. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous behind right. you. Okay. Beautiful day in Nashville. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Nice. Sam, um, are you ready to go with your pitch? I'm ready, yeah. You may begin. All right. Hi, I'm Sam Brooker, co-founder of Winner. Winner is a mobile and desktop app that enables amateur athletes and gamers to challenge others to skill-based competitions in their sport or game of choice. Golfers, gamers, street ballers, tennis players, and more, build your brand within the app and Winner will match you with competitors of a similar skill level where you will compete for not only bragging rights as you climb the ranks of the Winner app, but also for real money as each competition requires its own tournament entry fee. Go head to head with individuals or teams in your local area or take your career on the road and build your own customized national touring circuit. The winner social gaming platform will have a far reaching impact on the world of amateur sports, gaming, fan engagement, with ample opportunities for both sponsorships and ad revenue. Do you have what it takes to be a winner? Thank you, Sam. And I feel like that has yeah. a ton of implications across disciplines, esports, a lot of different uh, Absolutely. verticals there, for sure. Yeah. All right, judges, your two minutes to ask Sam your questions begins now. You know, uh, I'm just going to say, part of the reason I don't have a ton of questions, you really were pretty thorough in covering a lot of that. Yeah. Of, of cool. um, You know, I guess I'm curious as to, you know, when you talk about sponsorship models, for example, would you be right. looking to develop a sponsorship ecosystem by port, or would it be, you know, a system-wide situation? Or like if you have pickup ball, that would have a particular sponsor. Right. Sorry, it's breaking up a little bit. Um, but I think what I gathered from the question about sponsorships and, and it would be, you know, multi-level in the sense of like, you know, we're, we, we always imagine kind of like a Red Bull as a, as a, you know, a major sponsor. Um, but then obviously as you know, in, in the content creation influencer world, there's opportunities for, for these players as they gain traction 
within the app to get their own sponsorships, you know, for gear and, and, and have click through ads to uh, sell the gear that they're using for competitions. Sam, do you go up a rating system? I mean, how, how does that work? Yes. Yeah. If you can imagine, like the rankings would be similar to like uh, a professional tennis or golf, you know, with handicaps and such. And obviously each competition, the scores are are accounted for in each game. So like the, the algorithms behind the scene would be what would qualify you as as your skill level to keep it in a in a fair, you know, so you're not you're not able to hustle people. And in fact, the ratings would be similar to how an Airbnb, you know, works where you, yeah. you don't know what you rate, rate each other until after the game. So if you're a, a bad sportsman, um, you'll hear about it. And if you're a good sportsman, you know, you'll hear about would you, it. <laughs> would you be an asset to uh, the scouting and drafting and esports? Would I would you, think so. You know, yes. You know, there's a few things that could happen around that. I mean, that, that may be an important part of your, uh, you know, of the ecosystem you're trying to impact. Absolutely. I think it's a, a natural progression, right, what you just said. Okay. All right, Sam, thank you so much for telling us Whoa. about Winner. Yeah. Sounds like they have a lot of interest in and in how to use this in the e space, especially since most of us are in our houses for most of the time yeah. these days. <laughs> <laughs> so we thank you for telling us about it. We appreciate you. All right. Now begins the uh, most difficult part for our judges, at least. The judges will now use the judging form that they have received to tally up their scores. We will use those, those scores that they are inputting right now to uh, send to our team, our team will tally those scores, and then we'll be able to get back with you. As a reminder, um, we have two winners for each pitch for good and then an audience favorite. So our two winners for today's competition of these six will be our top two scorers, of course, and then our audience favorite, you will get to decide on. So you should have a poll pop to your screen here if it's not already up there and you will get to vote on your favorite. So the audience favorite will receive a $1,500 scholarship to apply to the program or support offering of their choosing from the National Entrepreneur Center. Our two winners will each win a $2,000 grant. And part of why we're able to provide that grant is because of our amazing sponsors. So um, I'm not sure if there's a particular sponsor page here. So if you want, I, I think there could be, I'm not entirely sure, Jeremy. If not, they're all listed at the bottom of the slide that you're seeing. We have been supported tremendously this year by Dell for Entrepreneurs and Dell Technologies. Dell equipped our entire staff with Dell computers, which I'm looking at right now. And um, they've been just supportive in, in a lot of different ways of figuring out how do we take our data infrastructure to the next level as an organization personally, in addition to their offerings that they give to entrepreneurs, which we're happy to extend to our members. We have Kaufman, the Kaufman Foundation. If you've never heard of the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation and you're at all interested in entrepreneurship, especially from you know a, a national level, policy level, advocacy level, I highly suggest you find out more about the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation. They are out of Kansas City and they do a lot of work around building ecosystems within the interior. Oh gosh, there is a dog situation uh, within the interior of the US. And um, again, Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation, look them up. I wish there was someone, my husband is somewhere. May he come remove my dog. And then lastly, Launch Tennessee. Launch Tennessee, if you've also, I, I would be shocked if you've heard of the Nashville Entrepreneur Center and not Launch Tennessee. They're an organization that works with the state of Tennessee to deploy dollars, resources, and uh, advocacy to entrepreneurship across our state. They are on a mission to make Nash, I'm sorry, Tennessee the most startup friendly state in the US. Um, in addition to supporting, supporting the National Entrepreneur Center, they also support seven other entrepreneur centers across the state and a few other um, kind of industry specific um, agencies and entities like the Tennessee Energy Network, for example, that works to secure and deploy smart energy across the state. Um, so if you've not already voted, make sure that you have voted on your favorite. Judges, make sure you've submitted your... Jeremy just popped up. Jeremy, are we already tallied? We are not tallied. Um, oh, gosh. I okay. I got say, I'm going to steal the screen <laughs> away from you guys for just a second. Um, okay, and while we, our team over here at the Pitch for Good headquarters is going to tally the scores and we'll bring the presentation back when we're... Um, we have everything ready, which should be Perfect. a couple minutes. And so, Bryn, I'd love to Perfect. chat with some of the judges while, yes. while we're tabulating. I had a couple of questions for Sammy, actually. Um, Sammy, I wanted you to share a little bit more about Triller and then Big Room, what's the, the idea that you're currently, the startup you're currently working on now, if you 
wouldn't mind sharing that with us. Sure. A little bit uh, about both entities. Yeah, Triller uh, is a music video making social platform um, that we launched in 2016 or 17 um, based off of automating music video creation. Uh, that's how it started as a utility, then it became a social network. I split around that time to start Big Room. Um, Big Room is like Triller was automating music video. Uh, Big Room is automating live event capture. So mm. we created software that uh, completely emulates cameramen and directors uh, when they're just through machine learning and AI. Uh, and Whoa. it all over the country. We were the, the main live streaming partner for the Neva YouTube Safer Stages. Uh, mm. Like I said, we were in Nashville, we are in Exit Inn and Mercy Lounge. We got into Troubadour, uh, working on the Apollo right now. Mm. And, uh, and it's exciting. This has to be one of those interventions that people who work in venues have wanted for decades. I don't I know how you cracked it. Up. Yeah. Honestly, before we started doing this about a year ago, um, because I'm a show junkie and I just wanted to be able to see every live show um, and venues wouldn't be able to live stream. It's just not scalable mm. to mm -hmm. do so much live streaming. So I built it and venues were like, why do we need this? This doesn't make any sense. And we were building it out. And then of course COVID happened and it changed. Everybody's like, wait, why weren't we, why weren't we set up for this? Mm. Um, mm. Do you have, um, just as, as a, someone who loves music, do you have a favorite pandemic music project that's come out? Do you have any artists that have dropped an album that you've just been loving? Uh, I'm biased and we, we, <laughs> We did the, the Post Malone live stream on, uh, I don't know if you saw that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might be biased for that one, but that was a special moment. That was like the first real moment of live, like it felt like a live show was happening again to, mm. to me. And I didn't realize how much I missed it. It was like an emotional moment, you know, to be able to oh. see. Uh, yeah, 100%. We had um, a friend of mine released an album on Friday and we had a socially distanced outside um, like 15 people private event candles and flowers and stuff and it was just a small gathering of people and playing guitar and no uh, no amplification and it was very emotional um, to be there and to see someone play music again and uh, it it really especially in a town like this where a lot of us came and stayed because of the music scene it is kind of in the bones of a lot of us who are here so i completely resonate with that right now people are completely. stressed they're having hard lives and it tugs at your heartstrings for more than one reason you know like yeah yeah and it's getting us through i think a lot of us have gotten through the pandemic through content um content has saved us in so many ways by helping pass the time and even just watching the good place uh recently finished since they put the last season on Netflix, it's like, oh my gosh, there's content that has nothing to do with this current moment. So um, appreciate you doing that. Love Exit In um, and really excited to see some Nashville and New York collabo when we can see these live streams up and running. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for letting us, kind of bringing us in on that. It looks like when I see this drum emoji, I know it's time, it's time to do something big. So Jeremy, are you ready to announce our winners? We are ready to rock. <laughs> okay, Jeremy, please take it away. So the winner of the first judges award, give a virtual round of applause to Banflex and well done, Eric. Congrats, Banflex. I'm gonna bring in folks as we announce them. Um, and then we're gonna do a photo op at the end. Uh, next up, the other winner of the fan uh, and ignore the wrong date on the check. It, it'll still, it still works, trust me. Um, you can still cash it, but the next, <laughs> Winner that's taking home a two thousand dollar grant is TM App. We have Congrats. Tim. Let me bring you on, and then we got Tim and Eric. Got their uh, their last vote. Um, we tallied those up, and the audience award goes to Q Audio. Yay! So big round of applause to all the companies that applied, and thank you to the judges. Um, really quickly, I'm just going to go ahead and bring up the rest of 
the individuals um, that presented today, just so we can kind of celebrate, get a quick uh, photo, which in this case is a screenshot <laughs> um, to document the experience. And, um, and then you guys will be on your way and to have a wonderful afternoon. So just waiting on Riley and then let me get Sam. But well done guys, congratulations um, for, for those winners and just for everyone in general. Um, Huge congratulations. Such a fun, such a fun time. Yes. My check is blank. My check looks blank here. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth yeah, more yeah. than what money can buy. You get an easy Priceless. Uh, Priceless. Item. Priceless. <laughs> Great. <laughs> cool. It's like um, those old MasterCard ads. It's amazing. So All right. I'm going to, oh, whoops. I'm going to stop sharing really quick. Um, and then on the count of three, we'll all say cheese and our team will snag a quick, uh, we'll snag a quick screenshot. So one, two, three. Cheese. Got it. Cool. <laughs> and then I will pick it right back over to Bryn just to close us out um, and to send everybody on their way. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I really was, you know, every single pitch for good is exciting. We've got five. Uh, five of these under our belt at this point, maybe six, actually five is correct. I believe under our belts at this point, every single one is exciting, but there is something really resonant about doing this one around music and entertainment, given that's the specialness of our town and of our state. So thank you all so much for bringing these ideas to bear. We've got another pitch for good in the series coming up next month on healthcare. And as you know, that's another big industry that really drives Nashville healthcare and we've got some cool ideas coming down the pike on that we've also got if you're interested in some of the music applications and music technologies that you heard about today we have project music showcase happening on thursday october 29th just a week from today it will be a, a similar format but we actually have used a new i believe this is going to be on hopin is that correct jeremy we'll be using a new platform that will allow you to engage directly with the people who are pitching so it will simulate some of that feeling and energy of when you're going to a live pitch event and you get to connect with the people who are there. So i um, really excited for that. And then lastly, tomorrow, we have a pitch event with uh, in collaboration with Mitsubishi Motors North America. If you didn't know, Mitsubishi is, is relocating, Mitsubishi Mi Motors North America is locating their North American headquarters to Franklin, Tennessee, just south of Nashville. Um, and that is happening this year, over the course of this year and next year. They have partnered with us to uh, start this competition called Small Batch Big Ideas to fuel their Small Batch Big Network program. So 10 companies will pitch tomorrow, a minute pitch just like today. And then five of them will be selected to be part of this network a year-long partnership with Mitsubishi Motors North America, figuring out retail technologies, how to scale, if, if there's any applications in the vehicle space or transportation space. And they're really highlighting people who start with a small idea or a small kernel artisanship, makership, and how they can get that idea bigger. We've got 10 companies that have been selected from across the 13 counties that make up the Nashville MSA. So we can't wait to see them pitch. One of those winners will get a six-month lease to the new Mitsubishi Eclipse, which... I don't know. That makes me very excited. Uh, very, very excited because that's a kind of bigger and more high profile prize that we've been able to award. And thanks to their sponsorship, we're able to give it away. So again, thank you to everyone. Thank you to Jeremy, producer extraordinaire. Thank you to our judges, Gil, Brian, Damon, and Sammy for being on the call and spending their time with us today. Thank you to our six brave pitchers and the uh, dozens of people who applied we can't thank you enough for being part of this more broadly, not just this event, but part of this ecosystem that makes our city, our region, and our country thrive. So everyone, please enjoy your day. Wherever you are, be safe, take care, and um, we hope to see you at the next event. Thank you so much, and enjoy Thanks, your day. Guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank guys, you, guys. guys. Thank you so much. Good Wonderful job by all. Tighten up. Yep. Tighten <laughs> up, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Go Titans, go ACNs, Woo. go Big Loud. <laughs> Big Room, Thriller, everybody. Yeah, love it. Mm -hmm. All right. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye, Enjoy everyone. Peace, everyone.